free. And nothing to be to be refused, uh -huh. if it be received with thanksgiving. Go ahead. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. It is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Go ahead. If thou put thy brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Nourished up in the words of faith and a good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. Now, I'm going to put the brothers and the sisters in remembrance of this. Because he said, if you put them, I mean, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Now, we're going to look up a word here. We're going to look up sanctification. What does sanctification mean? Sanctification. Separation. Oh, separation. So it is separated by the word of God and prayer. What is separated by the word of God? Things that you may eat and things that you may not eat. Go ahead and read. Setting apart. Setting apart. To separate from the world uh, and consecrate unto God. Uh-huh. To sanctify anything is to declare that it belongs to God. It may refer to persons, places, days, and seasons, and objects used for worship. Uh-huh. So now, so what does sanctification mean or sanctify mean? Set apart, right, for use. Well, it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Now we gotta find out where did God set this apart at? When did He sanctify this? But before, we, let's go. Let's go to uh, let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 14 chapter. Cause you know a, a lot of times here in Israel we read about the things that you're not supposed to eat. We're gonna read today about the things that Lord says you can eat too. We're going to Deuteronomy 14 and we're gonna pick it up at verse three. Deuteronomy 14 and three. Deuteronomy 14 and 3. Go ahead. Thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. Now, <laughs> you understand? Don't eat nothing abominable. <laughs> Go ahead and read. These are the beasts which ye shall eat. Uh, oh, now you tell the beasts that you should say, don't eat no abominable thing. These are the things that you're supposed to eat. Go ahead and read. The ox, uh -huh. the sheep, and the goat, uh -huh. the heart. And the road book. Man, you know, it's a, it's a place down in Chicago, boy, they got some good goat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that goat is, well, anyway, go ahead and read. Number five. I'm getting a little hungry, I guess. <laughs> Verse five. And the fallow deer, uh -huh. and the wild goat, and the pie guard, uh -huh. and the wild ox. Now, he said, these are the things that you, that you can eat. The goat, and the ox, and the sheep. And the heart and the robot, these are deers now, and the, and the follow deer, and the wild goat, and the pie guard. Go ahead. And the wild ox. Uh huh. And the cowboys. <clears throat> Go ahead. Cowboys. And every beast that parteth the hoof. Every be beast that do what? Parteth part the, the hoof. hoof. It's got a split hoof. Go ahead and read. And cleaveth the cleft into two claws. Uh huh. And cheweth the cud among and, the beasts. And cheweth the cud. That means they chew vegetation, they don't eat animals. Anybody understand that? Yes, Just like when the Lord told Noah uh, uh, um, um, uh, that, that, I mean, told Adam uh, that every green herb I have given from, to man for me and I have given it to the beast too. But these clean animals right here, they still eat what? Herbs. They don't eat meat. You know, you got the unclean beast, the two by two he brought, they eat meat, don't they? But these right here, these clean feet, they eat just herbs. Go ahead and read. And chew the cud among the beasts, uh -huh. that, that ye shall eat. That ye shall eat. So it's got to be, have a split hoof and chew the cud. And we're going to find out another of characteristics too. Go ahead and read. Verse 7. Uh-huh. Nevertheless, these ye shall not eat of them that chew the cud. Uh-huh. Or of them that divide the cloven now, 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 you know, you can't eat these. So, you know, you ain't got to try to figure out, you know, whether I should eat this or not. All they have to do is say, you know, just look at it. If it's got these characteristics right, you can eat it. That's right. <laughs> you understand? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Number, verse 7 again. Go ahead. Nevertheless, these ye shall not eat of them that chew the cud uh -huh. or of them that divide the cloven hoof. Uh-huh. The cloven hoof is, is round, in other words. But it's got a split hoof. Go ahead and read. As the camel. Uh-huh. 
Now, I don't know nobody eating no camel. Mm -hmm. But I imagine somebody eating it, though, because it's here, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Somebody must be eating. <laughs> Go ahead and read. And the hair. I, like, you know. Yeah, yeah. My brother-in-law, he cooked up some one time. I thought it was chicken. I say, man, that's some strange-looking chicken. You know, oh, that ain't chicken. That's right, man. Man, get that out of my house. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Look just like chicken. <laughs> but go ahead and breathe. And the coney. Uh huh. For they chew the cud, but do not divide not the hoof. See, he said the coney. They chew the cud, but they don't divide the hoof. It's got to have both characteristics. And other, it, actually, it's three because chew the cud and split hoof, and it's got to be cloven footed. Go ahead and read. Therefore, they are unclean unto you. Uh-huh. Verse 8. Uh-huh. And the swine. Oh, well, I see you hesitated on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting to it. <laughs> Go ahead and read. And the swine. Uh-huh. Because it divided the hoof. Go ahead. Yet you have not the cud. Go ahead. It is unclean unto you. Uh-oh. Now we got a problem now, don't we? The world has a problem, don't they? <laughs> So this is number one meat right here, ain't it? You know, uh, beef, you know, price is going up. They're having a shortage of beef and stuff now, aren't they? So what you think people are going to flock to? To this pig right here. You understand? Not us. But I'm just saying the world, you know, they're going to flock to this pig right here. But the Lord said what? It is unclean unto you. So, you know, we got a problem now, don't we? But now, finish that, finish that for Finish that. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, uh -huh. nor touch their dead carcasses. So you should not eat of their flesh, neither should you touch their dead carcasses. Which means somebody ask you, look, man, why are you at the grocery store? Pick me up uh, some ham hocks. Aw. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you damn, you have to get yourself, mister. <laughs> now, so let me show you a little something about this, this swine. We're going to... Uh, we're going to go to, uh, first we're going to go to this article right here. Uh, it's called, uh, Eating Pork Can Be Hazardous to Your Health. So, go ahead and read that real quick. <clears throat> Pigs are known to carry up to 200 diseases and 18 different parasites and worms. Oh, you see this? You know, if men wonder why they got parasites and stuff, and this is where they're coming from. This unclean food. He said pigs are known to carry up to 200 diseases and different parasites and worms. Go ahead and read. Including the deadly worm called Trichinella. Uh-huh. Trichinella spiralis. Uh-huh. This worm is commonly called trichinosis. Now, you see he called it deadly, though. <laughs> mm -hmm. He said this worm is commonly called... Uh, trichinosis, and go ahead. And there is no known cure for these spiral worms. And there is no known cure for these spiral worms. Now, we're going to read a little bit about this trichinosis. So we know, that we know now they come from pigs, don't we? Mm -hmm. Lord told you don't be eating this, didn't he? Yes, sir. Trichinosis. Trich Trichinosis. Uh-huh. See, trichina. Okay, see, trichina. Trichina. Okay. Uh-huh. So now we're going to read a little bit about this. Go ahead and start. Yeah. Right. Trichina is a small round worm that causes... We still talk about trichinosis now. Trichina. Go ahead. That causes the disease trich trichinosis. Uh-huh. It's a small worm that causes the disease trichinosis. Go ahead. The worm is a parasite. That is, it lives in and feeds on other animals. Uh-huh. The trichina infects human beings and other animals, especially hogs, bears, and rats. Ah! Oh. You see this? Hogs, bears, and rats. And people eat rats, too. We're going to get to that in a minute. <coughs> people eat rats. A delicacy. Go ahead and read. <laughs> Most infections of trichinosis in the United States and Canada result from eating infected pork that has not been cooked enough. Uh-huh. Trichinosis in hogs, bears, and rats usually results from eating infected meat and infected garbage. Oh, so now they turn around and eat infected garbage and stuff, and then you turn around and eat them. 
Because people eat bass too. I want you to know that too. I was just watching on History Channel, and that's what the woman was hunting for, bass. And she wasn't just trying to get the fur off of them neither. She was eating them. But people eat bass too. So, they, but they turn around and eat infected stuff, and then you turn around and eat it, and you, what, what is going to happen then? You're going to be infected too. But this is the disease called trichnosis. But go ahead and read some more. Some persons carry trichina worms in their bodies for many years. Uh-huh. And never have severe symptoms. Go ahead. But in other persons, the worms irritate the intestine and cause diarrhea, uh -huh. nausea, and vomiting. When they pass through the blood, fever, headache, and muscular pain. Now you see all this? What occur. could happen to you eating pork? And some people eat rats and bass too, so I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna uh, 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 leave them out neither. But go ahead, Marie. After they reach the muscles, they cause swelling in the face and other parts of bleeding under the skin. Uh huh. The worms may form their cysts in the diaphragm. Now wait a minute. The diaphragm. What is the diaphragm? Chief muscle used for breathing. Chief muscle used for breathing. Just from eating pork and rats and bears. <laughs> you see this? Now, most people don't know about this. You know, God knows what he wants man to eat. He knows what he wants the beast to eat. And look at what can happen to you by eating this pork where God say don't eat this swine. God say don't eat it. I wonder why. Go ahead. And make breathing painful. The disease is seldom fatal. It is seldom fatal, but it is deadly, though, isn't it? Look at this. A trichnosis by from eating swine and bath and rats. And like I said, we're gonna get to that in a minute. The rat eaters. That's why the Lord said don't eat this swine. Let's go now. Let's go to uh let's go to Leviticus 11 chapter. Leviticus 11. And man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord. Shall man live? Yes, sir. Leviticus 11 and 1. Leviticus 11 and 1. Now, this is going to get a little, you know, uh, uh, laborious. Uh, might be a little boring or whatever. But we're gonna, we got to read it, though, because it's in here. Leviticus 11 and 1. Now, we're going to deal with the food that the Lord tell you not to eat. Go ahead and read. 11 and 1, Leviticus. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them. Now the Lord said this, didn't he? Go ahead. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Uh-huh. Whatsoever part of the hoof. Whatsoever part of the hoof. Go and, ahead. And is cloven-footed. Uh-huh. And chew of the cud. Uh-huh. Among the, among the beasts that, that ye shall eat. Go ahead. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat. These of, shall you not eat. Go ahead. Of them that chew the cud, or of them that divide the hook, as the camel, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hook. Uh huh. He is unclean to you. Go ahead. And the coney, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hook, he is unclean unto you. Uh huh. And the hare, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hook, uh huh. He is unclean unto you. Go ahead. The, and the swine. Though he divide the hoof and be cloven-footed. Now he divide the hoof and he's cloven-footed. Go ahead. Yet he cheweth not the cud. Well, he don't chew a cud. He eat anything, don't he? Pig, he eat a rock. <laughs> yes, sir. Go ahead and read. He is unclean to you. Go ahead. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. Go ahead. They are unclean to you. These shall ye eat of all that are in the water. Now we're dealing with the waters. Now he said, These shall ye eat of uh, that all are in the waters. Go ahead. Whatsoever hath fins and, and scales uh -huh. in the waters, Go ahead. in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. Now if it's got fins and scales, then you can eat it. Catfish don't have no scales, do it? No, sir. Got fins, but it don't have no scales, do it? That is unclean unto you. Crab, lobster, all that is garbage food. Yes, sir. Men have made it a delicacy, though, getting rich off of, uh, you know, red lobster and all these types. Well, I don't mean to talk about nobody, but you understand? They eating them lobsters and crabs and all this stuff, thinking it's some type of delicacy because men have told them that it is, didn't they? 
God didn't say this though, did he? He said the ones that have fins and scales, those are the ones you should eat. Those are the ones you should eat. Go ahead and read. Verse 10. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas uh -huh. and in the rivers and all that move in the waters and of any, li any living thing that any living thing which is in the water, uh -huh. they shall be an abomination unto you. Oh, so this is an abomination to you too? Things that are in the water? Not just the beast, right? But things in the water can be an abomination to you. Go ahead and read. They shall be even an abomination unto you. Uh huh. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, but ye shall have their carcasses in abomination. Go ahead. Whatsoever hath no fins nor scales in the waters, that shall be an abomination unto you. Ooh, now that's clear, ain't it? Yes, sir. That is clear. Go ahead and read. 13. Uh-huh. And these are they which ye shall have an abomination among the fowl. Uh-huh. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. They oh, so now we're dealing with the fowls now. So you just can't eat any bird you see, can you? <laughs> you can't eat any bird you see. Go ahead. The eagle. Uh-huh. the ossifrage. And the osprey. And the vulture. And the kite after his kind. Now, you are, we ain't going to read all this stuff. You go in here and see that bird in here, then you can't eat it. <laughs> and thank God we don't see chicken. <laughs> so we'd be in trouble, wouldn't we? We would be in trouble. Skip down to verse, uh, uh, skip down to verse uh, 20 and read. All fowls that creep, going upon all four, shall be an abomination unto you. Uh-huh. Yet these may ye eat of every flying, creeping thing that goeth upon all four. Go ahead. Which have legs above their feet, and to leap with all upon the earth. Uh-huh. Even these of them ye may eat. The locust after his kind. The locust. Go ahead. And the ball locust after his kind. Uh-huh. And the beetle after his kind. And the grasshopper after his kind. Didn't know you could eat this, did you? Beetles and locusts and grasshoppers. <laughs> Throw some chocolate on them. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> You, you a snack. <laughs> Go ahead and read. 23. Uh-huh. But all other flying, creeping things which have four feet shall be an abomination unto you. Uh-huh. And for these ye shall be unclean. See now? And for these you shall be unclean. You know, these things are abominable to you. You know, if you want to be a servant of God, this is what God says is abominable to you, and this is what is unclean unto you. Skip what man say. If you want to listen to man and eat what you want to eat, then you go ahead and do that. But we're talking about God, what God says right here now, right? Mm -hmm. You want to be a servant of God, these things you cannot eat. Go ahead and read. Middle 24. Uh-huh. Whosoever touches the carcass of them shall be unclean until the even. Uh-huh. And whosoever beareth aught of the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even. Go ahead. The carcass of every beast which divideth the hoof and is not cloven-footed, nor true of the cud, are unclean to unto now, you. Now, why he come all the way back down here in verse 26 and say it again? When he told you, like in verse, uh, what was that, verse uh, uh, 3? He come back again and told you the same thing. Uh, 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 um, um, what verse was that? Uh, 26. 26. The carcass of every beast which divided the hoof and is not cloven footed, nor chew the cud, are unclean unto you. Everyone that touches them shall be what? Unclean. So you're not even supposed to touch them, let alone eat them. Go ahead and read. 27. Uh-huh. And whatsoever goeth upon his paws, uh -huh. among all manner of beasts that go on all four, go ahead. those are unclean unto you. Now, dogs and cats, people eat this. <laughs> Bears, people eat this. But the Lord said what? It is unclean unto you. Go ahead and read. Whoso touches their carcass shall be unclean even until the even. Uh-huh. And he that beareth the carcass of them shall... And you know, he talking to Israel, but if Israel got to do it, then everybody got to do it, then don't they? Yes, sir. <laughs> Go ahead and read. And he that beareth the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even. Uh-huh. They are unclean unto you. Go ahead. These shall also these also shall be unclean unto you among the creeping things that creep upon the earth. Uh-huh. The weasel. Uh-huh. And the mouse. Wait a minute, the weasel and the mouse. The mouse, that's a rat. You understand? So these are unclean unto you though, aren't they? 
Go ahead and read. And the tortoise. Uh huh. After his kind. And the turtle. That's the tortoise. And I see people who eat turtles too. Mm -hmm. When I was a little bitty kid, you know, uh, a cat brought a uh, next door neighbor's son brought a turtle, and he set him out in the middle in the middle of the yard where everybody could see it. And start start beating the thing. He gonna kill it, and we gonna eat it. I'm like, you gonna eat it, but <laughs> I'm like, watch you kill it, but I ain't been to eat it. So they killed the thing and ate it. The heart was still beating though. The heart was still beating. Killed the turtle and ate. It. Now that was the first time I ever seen black people eating turtle. You understand? Didn't know that. We well, go ahead and read. You finish that? Yeah. Skip down to verse 44. Skip down to verse 44 and read it. For I am the Lord your God. Uh-huh. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves. Wait a minute now. What does sanctify mean? Set apart. Set apart. No, you should se separate yourself. For I am the Lord your God, and you shall therefore sanctify yourselves. Go ahead. And ye shall be holy. Wait a minute. And ye shall be what? Holy. Didn't we read in 1 Peter over there? Be ye holy, for I am holy. And this is one of the ways that you be holy, isn't it? He said, For I am the Lord your God, you shall therefore sanctify yourself, and you shall be holy. Go ahead. For I am holy. For I am holy. Go ahead. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Uh-huh. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Uh-huh. Ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. Go ahead. This is the law of the beast. Ooh, this is the law. Of the beast. Go ahead. And of the file. Uh-huh. And of every living creature that moveth in the waters. Go ahead. And of every creature that creepeth upon the earth. Go ahead. To make a difference between the unclean. To make a difference between the unclean. And the clean. And the clean. See, that's what the, that's what the problem is now, the, uh, the, these days and times in this generation. Men don't want to show the difference between the unclean and the clean. But God said you should put a difference between the unclean and the clean, didn't he? Mm -hmm. To make a difference between the unclean and the clean, go ahead. And between the beast that may be eaten. Wait a minute, every beast is not made to be eaten, is it? Is it? Between the beast that may be eaten, go ahead. And the beast that may not be eaten. And the beast that may not be eaten. All beasts are not uh, for you to eat. You know, because people want to, well, I can pray over it, and then I can eat it. But he just told you right here, the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. He would have said right here, you could just pray over it and eat it, didn't he, wouldn't he? That would have been very simple. Let's go to Ezekiel, the 22nd chapter. Ezekiel 22. And we're going to pick it up at verse 23. Ezekiel 22. And 23. That trigonosis is something else, ain't it? Think twice about eating that pork now. <laughs> <laughs> Ezekiel 22. And we're going to pick it up at verse 23. Ezekiel 22 and 23. Go ahead and read that. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor rained upon in the day of indignation. Uh -huh. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst therefore, thereof, like a roaring lion ravening the prey. Uh -huh. They have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. Go ahead. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Uh huh. Her priests have violated my law. Her priests have violated my law. Go ahead. And have profaned my unholy things. Uh-huh. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. They have put no difference between the holy and the profane. And men don't do that today, do they? No, sir. They don't put no difference between the holy and profane. What else do they not do? Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. Go ahead and finish that. And have hid their eyes from my Sabbath. Now, you said they hid their eyes from my That Sabbath's got an S on it, don't it? So we're not just talking about the weekly Sabbath, are we? We're talking about those feast days, like the feast day that we're going to keep tomorrow eating the, the Passover. Mm -hmm. He said, they have not put a difference between the unclean and the clean. And men still 
are not putting the difference between the unclean and the clean. That's why you got men walking around saying you can just pray over it and you can eat it. Because they don't want to put no difference like God said we're supposed to do. And then call themselves a service of God. <clears throat> How are you serving God and then he tell you not to do something and you do it anyway? How is that serving God? They have put no difference between the unclean and the clean. They have hid their eyes from my Sabbath. Go ahead. And I am profaned among them. And I am profaned among them. I am profaned among them. Let's go to Mark, the seventh chapter. Because I know somebody going to try to go here. I know somebody going to try to go here. Mark 7. And we're going to pick up in verse 15. Mark 7 and 15. And we ain't running from nobody. No and we ain't leave no stone unturned. Mark 7. And we're going to pick it up at verse 15. Because I know somebody's going to go here. Go ahead and read it. Mark 7 and 15. Anybody got it? Amen. Go ahead and read it. There is nothing from without a man that entering to him can defile him. Uh-huh. See, now, you see that? So, there's nothing from without a man can de that, that, that entereth into him can defile him. Go ahead and read. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. The things that come out of him, those are the things that defile him. But we read earlier that uh, eating the uh, unclean food, that defile you, don't it? But we, what, what the Lord is showing you, natural things that show you uh, spiritual things here right here. We're dealing with moral issues what the Lord is dealing with now. We're dealing with moral issues. But go ahead and read, though. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Uh-huh. And when, when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. Uh-huh. And he saith unto them, are ye so without understanding also? Uh-huh. Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into a man, it cannot defile him? See, anything that entereth into a man, but look who he's talking to, his apostles, they know that uh, 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 between unclean and clean food, don't they? Yes, sir. But he's saying, so, so God get ready to deal with a moral issue right here. Go ahead and read. 19. I mean, the Lord, Jesus, he getting ready to deal with a moral issue right here. Go ahead and read. Verse 19. Uh-huh. Because it entereth not into his heart. See, it entereth not into his heart. Now, we're on the spiritual level now, right? Aren't we? Teach. We're dealing with the mind now. He said it's because it entereth not into his heart. So we're dealing on the spiritual side here, aren't we? Go ahead, because I'm going to show you that he ain't talking about food. He ain't really, talk, he ain't really necessarily talking about food. Food, I'm going to show you what Peter said. Go ahead and read. But into the belly. Uh-huh. And go Read out. that over. Read, read that over. Uh-huh. Because it entereth not into his heart, uh -huh. but into the belly. Uh-huh. And goeth out into the drought, purging all meats. Purging all meats. Go ahead. And he said, that which cometh out of a man, that defileth the man. Oh, wait a minute now. That which defileth a man cometh out of So the Lord dealing on a moral issue right here. Go ahead and read. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Oh, this is what we're talking about. Evil thoughts. This is what proceed about a man. This is what do what? Keep reading though. Adulteries. Uh-huh. Fornication. Uh-huh. Murders. Go ahead. Thefts. Uh-huh. Covetousness. Wickedness. Deceit. Uh-huh. Lasciviousness. An evil eye. Uh-huh. Blasphemy. Pride. Foolishness. Uh huh. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. Oh, so we did on a moral standpoint. He's he dealing with you from a moral standpoint, then, isn't he? That's right. We're not necessarily talking. He's not really. He's not concentrating on no foods. Now let's go and see, cause we we know we see that Jesus talking about moral. That's what come out of man. That's what's going to defile him. Murderer and covetous and thefts and lascivious, blasphemy and foolishness. All of these evil things come from within and defile of a man. Now let's show you what uh, Peter said over in Acts. The Lord ain't never done away with his dietary law. Acts the 10th chapter. He never done away with his dietary law. If he did, then why did Peter, why is Peter saying this? And he's telling the Lord this. Acts 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 11. Acts 10 and 11. Everybody got it? 
Now this Peter, now he on the housetop, he was hungry, so he waiting to eat. And so the Lord came to him, uh, uh, had an angel to come to him. Go ahead and read. And saw heaven open, and a certain vessel descending unto him. Uh-huh. It's it Peter had, now. Go ahead. As it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners, uh -huh. and let down to the earth. Now he saw this great sheet coming down uh, from the earth. Go ahead. Where were all manner of four-footed beasts. And where were earth. all manner of four-footed beasts. Go ahead. And wild beasts. Uh -huh. And creepy things. Uh -huh. And fowls of the air. Go ahead. And there came a voice of him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. Go ahead. But Peter said, not so, Lord. Wait a minute. Are you mean you're going to tell the Lord no? He said, not so, Lord. You know, all manner of beasts, clean and unclean, everything, right? The Lord said, rise, Peter, kill and eat. He said, not so, Lord. Why? For I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Ooh. Now, we're still talking about unclean here, aren't we? All the way here after Jesus died and rose from the grave and all of that to send it back to the Father. We all will be in Acts 10 chapter. He said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or what? Unclean. Because it was still unclean. This beast, beast and fowl, a fish, what was unclean, what God had deemed unclean, it was still unclean. Go ahead and read. 15. Uh huh. And the voice spake unto him again the second time. What, ha what God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. Now it appears that God hath cleansed these things, don't it? You know, because what God hath cleansed, call, call, that call not thou common. As though, you know, um, I, clean these, I clean these wild beasts and everything up and uh, fowls of the air that you're looking at all matter. So don't call it common or unclean. Read verse 16. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Read verse 17. Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean. Now, he, you know, he can't, you know, he tried to wonder, what, 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 you know, what is the Lord trying to show me? You understand? Because, you know, uh, I know I'm not supposed to eat nothing unclean. So what is he, what is he trying to show me? You understand? I'm going to start uh -huh. Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean. Uh -huh. Behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made... Inquiry for Simon's house uh -huh. and stood before the gate. So now Peter, you know, he done let the, the Lord done let down this sheet and it with all manner of beasts and everything. It ran Peter killing me. Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. So now he wondered now, what is this the Lord trying to show me? Now let's show you what the Lord was showing him. Skip down to verse 28 and read it. Go ahead. And he said unto them, you know how that is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. Uh-huh. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Oh. So when he showed him all these beasts and fowls and everything, he was um, symbolizing that for men. So he said, if God has shown me not to call any man common or unclean, not any food. That's right. Not any beast. You understand what I'm saying? So then what? What does that leave? The dietary law that God set up then. What does it leave that? Because we see, we see plainly that God wasn't talking about food. He was talking about men, wasn't he? Because Peter said, I've never eaten anything common or unclean. So now we know that we're talking about man here that he said don't call common or unclean. So now what does that leave to food? You still got unclean and clean, don't you? That's right, brother. Let's go now. Let's go to uh let's go to uh uh, uh let's go to 2 Corinthians the sixth chapter. 2 Corinthians 6. You know, being want to try to make a case for uh God doing away with his dietary law with this scripture right with Acts 10 chapter, but they don't keep reading though. They don't keep reading. 2 Corinthians 6 and 17. 2 Corinthians 6 and 17. Everybody got it? Amen. Amen. Go ahead and read that. Wherefore, come out from among them. Uh-huh. And be ye separate, saith the Lord. Go ahead. And touch not the unclean thing. Oh, wait a minute. Now, we're in Corinthians now. <laughs> this is after Jesus died and everything, ain't it? 
He said, touch not the unclean thing. What is the unclean thing? One of the unclean things the Lord told you not to touch. The carcass of an unclean animal, didn't he? He said, touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And we ain't corrected. He told this to the Gentiles. We ain't tell, he ain't talking to Israel. But Israel already knew. Now he's telling the Gentiles this. Which means, you know, in case nobody don't understand, a Caucasian people. That's right. Go ahead and read. And I will receive you. Uh-huh. And will be a father unto you. Uh-huh. And you shall be my sons and daughters, uh -huh. saith the Lord Almighty. Oh, so if you don't touch the unclean thing, then you could be his sons and his daughters then, huh? <laughs> Just like he said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Let's go now. Let's go to uh, uh let's go to Titus, the first chapter. Let's go to Titus, the first chapter. Titus, right after Timothy. Titus, the first chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 15. Titus 1 and 15. Because I want to know, what did Paul say? What does he mean, don't touch the unclean? What, what is the unclean thing you're not supposed to touch? <laughs> you had to go back to the law and find that out, don't you? First Timothy, I'm sorry, Timothy 1, uh, Titus 1 and 15. Titus 1 and 15, go ahead. Unto the pure all things are pure, uh -huh. but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving uh -huh. is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. Now wait a minute, how can a person defile himself? Then he say even their mind and their conscience is defiled. So it's not just defiled by the mind, you got to be you defiled by something else. But keep reading. 16. Uh huh. They profess that they know God, uh -huh. but in works they deny him. Go ahead. Being abominable. Oh, now how do you be abominable? Didn't he say, don't eat the unclean things unless you make yourself abominable? He said, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. Be abominable. Go ahead. And disobedient. Uh, what? <laughs> disobedient? <laughs> Didn't God tell you, that, uh, I want you to obey my voice? That's right. And when you eat those things which God commanded you not to eat, aren't you being disobedient? Yes, sir. Aren't you being abominable? Mm -hmm. Read that verse 16 again. They profess that they know God, uh -huh. but in works they deny him. Go ahead. Being abominable, abominable uh -huh. and disobedient, uh -huh. and unto every good work reprobate. Now, we read earlier that uh, those who defile this temple, God going to destroy them, didn't he? Didn't we? Before we go to show you what God, why God going to destroy man but defile the temple, let's go to Isaiah the 65th chapter first. Isaiah 65. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Isaiah 65 and 1. Go ahead and read it. I am sought of them that ask not for me. Uh -huh. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold me, behold me, unto a nation that was not called by my name. Uh-huh. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people. Uh-huh. Which walketh in a way that was not good, after their own thoughts. Go ahead. See, you know, he said they were walking in a way which was not good, and they walking after their own thoughts. Go ahead and read. Verse 3. Uh -huh. A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face. Go ahead. That sacrificeth in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick. Uh -huh. Which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments. Which eat swine's flesh. Ooh, wait a minute now, wait a minute now. You see what they do? He said, which remain among the graves. Meaning, you the walking dead. You see what they doing? He said, and lodge in monuments. Which eats what? Swine's flesh. You're walking dead. You eat swine's flesh. You're walking dead. I'm going to show you. But you're going to get a bigger punishment. you got a bigger punishment coming. Not only have you defiled yourself and walking unholy before God. He said right here, you lodge uh, in the, you remain among the graves. And you lodge in the monuments which eat swine's flesh. Go ahead. And broth of abominable things is in their vessels. Ooh, and the broth of abominable things are in their vessels. Meaning, all those other things that God told you not to eat. Mm -hmm. 
that make you abominable. They, they are in their vessels. What vessel? In their bodies. They've been eating this. He, he said this is abominable. Verse 5. Which say, stand by thyself. Uh-huh. Come not near to me. Uh, you know, because, you know, stand, stand over there. Don't come, 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 come by me. Why? For I am holier uh, than thou. I'm holier than thou. Ain't that what they tell you? You know, the people that I'm not trying to talk about them now. But the Sunday goers, they, you know, I'm holy. You walk around, y'all uh, 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 have Sunday dinners and everything. Everybody down there eat catfish and, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Ham, you understand? And, but you saying, I'm holy though. I'm serving God. That's who, you know, I didn't want to say it earlier, but that's who lodging in these monuments. You understand? Which eat swine's flesh and a uh, uh, broth of abominable things in that vessel which say, Stand by thyself, come not near me, for I am holier than thou. You see, what, 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 look what the Lord said, though. Look how angry he is. Go ahead and read. These are smoke in my nose. He said, these are smoke in my nose. You know how somebody throws some smoke and you get irritated? He said, these are smoke in my nose. Go ahead and read. A fire that burneth all the day. Now, let's go to, let's go to, uh, 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 Matthew the seventh chapter. Because I know somebody gonna say, Well, you judging. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm just reading the book. Yes, sir. I'm gonna show you who the judge is. Mm -hmm. I'm just reading and trying to keep myself from being abominable and defiled. Matthew 7 and 1. Matthew 7 and 1. I know somebody gonna say, You he judges, see that you know that preacher that he judge people. No, I don't. I ain't judging nobody. I ain't got no kingdom to put nobody in, and I ain't got no lake to find to put nobody in. In fact, I wish everybody make it into the kingdom. Amen, brother. Because, you know, you you know, if the Lord make, make us a judge, right, and then you see people standing there in the line, because, you know, because the Lord's not the only one going to be judging at judgment day. Those ones coming to the first red rate, they're going to judge too. So you see people in the line, you might see some of your friends, some of your relatives crying and stuff, because they know they done did wrong. You, you know, you, you might say, well, man, I don't want to throw them in the lake of fire, but I don't want the Lord to punish me neither, so I got to do what I got to do. You understand what I'm saying? Wish that all should come to repentance. That's what I wish. And that none should perish. Matthew 7 and uh, uh, pick it up at verse 1. Matthew 7 and 1. Because I know somebody going to say, ye judging. Go ahead. <laughs> judge not that ye be not judged. See, judge not that you be judged. Now, if I was judging, I wouldn't have read that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know if I judge you, I'm going to be judged. I wouldn't have read that. I said, let's go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> But we're not ducking and dodging from nobody. We're not leaving no stone unturned. Let's go to Colossians, the second chapter. I ain't judging nobody. Colossians 2. And we're going to pick it up at verse 13. Colossians 2 and 13. But I know somebody going to go here too. Somebody going to go here. Colossians 2 and 13. Go ahead and read that. Everybody got it? Amen. Colossians 2 and 13. Go ahead. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, uh -huh. hath he quickened together with him. Go ahead. Having forgiven you all trespasses, blooding out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, uh -huh. which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Uh-huh. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Uh huh. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink. Hold it down, hold it down. See, see you know, so I know somebody gonna go here. See, brother, right here, Colossians second chapter. Let no man therefore judge you in meat and drink. Go ahead. Or in respect of unholy day. Uh huh. Or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days. Now wait a minute now. So he said, let no man therefore judge you and meat and drink. Now, I, I'm not judging nobody. You can eat whatever you want to eat. That's up to you. I'm just reading the book to you. 
and try to keep myself from being abominable, abominable and defiled before the Lord. Because, you know, we got to read every little thing now, don't we? Toothpaste. You know what I'm saying? They put, put pork in everything. Yes, sir. You know, soon they're going to have uh, bacon on ice cream if they ain't already got it. Because they put bacon on everything now, ain't they? So I'm not judging no man on uh, meat and drink or respect. Now he said respect him on holy day. Now what is a holy day? The Passover, that's a holy day, ain't it? Yes, sir. The feast of unleavened bread, that's a holy day, ain't it? Mm -hmm. So he told the Colossians, don't let nobody judge you in doing these things. Sunday ain't no holy day. And then the day that the Lord, the, 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 the first day of the week that the Lord called the day of Pentecost, that come on the first day of the week. Don't nobody want to do that. <laughs> That's a holy day. On the first day of the week, but don't nobody want to do that one. Christmas, is that a holy day? No, sir. Well, sure, if it is, sure, to me in the Bible, and I, I do it. In fact, in Jeremiah 10, he said, don't do that, did he? So we know it ain't holy. So he's telling the Colossians, don't let nobody judge you in meat and drink. You know, these are the things, because Paul is constraining them to become as he is, a spiritual Jew. And how do you become a spiritual Jew? By doing those things which God commands you to do. Like, eating uncle, like not eating unclean beasts. And eating clean food. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Because he said holy days, uh, or the new moon, or the Sabbath days. Well, is, is, is Sunday the Sabbath day? No, sir. What about Wednesday? <laughs> it ain't the Sabbath day. We're dealing with the Word of God here. We ain't dealing with man's stuff. Traditions of man. So he said, don't let no man judge you in meat and drink and respect of the holy day or of the, uh, 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 or of the new moon or the Sabbath day. We're dealing with the Word of God here, aren't we? That's right. Not traditions of men. That's right. Now, let's go, to, uh, let's go to Romans, the 14th chapter. And the word of God says, these are the things that you may eat, and these are the things that you may not eat. And these are the holy days that I want you to keep right here. Go to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Like we're going to be keeping the Passover tomorrow night at, uh, 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 around 7.30. And the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Monday night around 7.30. So all those who want to come out, give us a call, let us know. Throw that little plug in there real quick. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Romans 14 and 1. Romans 14 and 1. Go ahead and read it. Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye. Now, wait a minute now. I told you we were going to come back here, didn't I? He said, him that is weak in the, in the faith, receive him. So now he is serving the God, ain't he? He just weak in the faith, ain't he? Go ahead and read. But not to doubtful disputations. Uh-huh. For one believeth that he may eat all things, uh -huh. another who is weak eateth herbs. Now, we don't know. <laughs> He's still a servant of God, ain't he? Mm -hmm. You know, whether you eat the meats that God commanded you to eat, or whether you eat herbs, you're still a servant of God. Go ahead and read. Because I know somebody going to try to go here to these, these little scriptures they try to go to. But we're going to clear it up for you, though. Go ahead and read. Verse 3. Uh-huh. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. Uh huh. And let and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. Now he's talking about all the ones that eat herbs, and he's talking about the ones that eat the meat that God said that you're supposed to eat. That's what he's talking about, because they're serving the God right here. This is what we're dealing with. One just weaker than the other. 